2.9% for 72 months on a 2022 F-150. And we are underway on ESPN Plus between Georgia Southern and James Madison. Danny Wall and Hunter Mosley with you on hand. As the Dukes, one of the newcomers in the Sun Belt Conference this year at 4, 6, and 2. And a foul here in the early seconds. James Madison coming in after a 2-2 tie back on Tuesday against American in their final non-conference game of the season. You see here the Dukes trying to move the ball through their back line. And Hunter, no wins yet in Sunbelt Conference, 0-2-1. But overall, the Dukes have had some success early throughout the year just trying to find that success late in the season. This is a program that prides itself on a very defensive back line. And this year they've struggled to find that at times. And new conference, new opponents, it's always interesting to see what's going to happen. Already a shot from Georgia Southern and caught by the goalkeeper Sebastian Conlin, a true freshman for the Dukes. It was Austin Hardy on the cross for the Eagles. Georgia Southern, one in 10 on the season. But when we spoke with Eagles head coach John Murphy, he says the results doesn't really dictate how the team has played throughout the year. This is a team that's gotten better every single game. And it's been a long process. It's been a hard process, but they're getting better and the results will eventually come. Starting lineups for the Dukes, we mentioned Evan Southern, the Redshirt junior forward, but who else do you want to see look to step up for the Dukes tonight? I'd like to see Melker Anselm step up. It's his 70th career start tonight, and senior captain, redshirt senior captain, and I really would love to see this guy get a goal or make a big impact in this game tonight. Anselm, one of the team captains for JMU. As the Dukes... Looking to move the ball upfield towards the middle. That was Alex Krakowiak. Over to the near side to Josiah Blanton. Blanton with a touch pass up to Giannis Leland. And Leland has it stolen away. Austin Hardy knocks it out of play for the Eagles. It will be possession Dukes. A look at Georgia Southern starting 11. And we mentioned, of course, Samuel Odame. But keep an eye out for Hillary Odihambo and Jack Ireland, a couple of players that Coach Murphy has said has made great progress throughout the season. A young Eagles team as the corner kick is sent out of the play by the Eagles. The Dukes wasting no time and a foul. So Bland will throw in for JMU. Redshirt sophomore from Roswell, Georgia, returning to his home state for this matchup against the Eagles. You know he's got to be excited for this one. Coming home, probably has some family out here tonight, and you know he wants to perform well in front of all of them. So the stop of the play was rather for an injury timeout for the Eagles. Victor Kubel. Freshman defender has yet to get up. Something that the Eagles don't want to see here early in this game. We've touched on it throughout the year how this is a young Georgia Southern team, but these freshmen have been making progress throughout the year. I mean, Coach Murphy said at this point in the year, they're no longer considered freshmen. They have all, over half a season of games under their belt. It's great to see these freshmen having big impacts on this team. With so many of them, you knew coming in that freshmen were going to have a lot of minutes. 
but having a starting goalkeeper that's a freshman and multiple starters that are freshmen, you can really see how this team's building up. And it's good to see Kubel able to walk off on his own power with the trainer. A look at Eagles head coach John Murphy in his seventh season. Mentioned that the focus in practice leading into JMU has been more so player-led and They've been focusing on themselves, not really trying to scout the other team, just trying to work on what they can do to get better each and every day. When you have such a young team, you have to make sure your players are getting better instead of worrying about the players on the other team that are going to cause a problem. Tyler Clegg for the Dukes. Here's a cross by Blanton. Shot into the hands of Dagoberto Romero. So a good shot early on the start for the Dukes, but Romero is there. And as you mentioned, Hunter, Romero, a true freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia, but he's been the every, he's been the starter for most of the year for the Eagles. He got thrown in early, but he's done a great job of manning it down. hasn't hasn't played his best at times, but always finds a way to stand in front of the goal and keep shots from getting in there most of the time. Sebastian Conlon, also a freshman from James Madison from Reston, Virginia. So you're seeing two young goalkeepers and four, the Dukes. Here's another attack, cross inside, and a shot goes over the goalpost, collision with Romero. He is down. That's another member of the Eagles down just five minutes in. You see here early, they're trying to get the ball to Everton Southern, and you just have a collision. You hate to see it. Uh, hope Dagoberto is okay, and just one of those plays that sometimes you just can't avoid. So first, Kubel went down, now Romero. It'll be interesting to see if Romero will stay in this match as well. You see behind Coach Murphy, I believe it's Nate Martinez, another freshman goalkeeper, starting to get his gloves on. He might come in for Romero. You see the trainer checking out the, the nose of Romero. I mean, the Eagles knew this was going to be a physical matchup coming into tonight. James Madison is a very aggressive team. Uh, they actually lead the Sun Belt in yellow cards so far, and so you know you're going to get a physical team. Sometimes they get a little chippy and a little bit out of control, but it's a team that just plays with a, their heart and on their shoulder and always, always stays aggressive. So Romero seems to be okay after being checked out by the trainer. Play resumes. And then stopped for a moment. So Romero will redo the goal kick. And Georgia Southern looking to bounce back after a tough matchup on Sunday against the number three team in the nation and Sunbelt Conference foe in Kentucky. A tough 6-0 loss. And Coach Murphy said, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but we just knew that we have to put that game behind us and focus on moving forward as Southern couldn't keep the ball in play for JMU. That's the type of loss you can't keep in the back of the, your head. You have to erase it and move on. If you let that loss sit there, it'll build and your confidence will go away. But this team is young. As they can get rid of that loss in their heads, they can move forward. Coach Murphy mentioned this was a transitional year, but the team culture has been well in the locker room. Culture is a very important thing with a young team. Finding a way for all the players to keep a positive mindset, especially in a year where the success hasn't always been there. Dukes looking for an angle towards the far side. This is Liam Moore on the cross in the box. Ball rolls to Romero. Good deflection by the Eagles and Angel Segrero there.
Blanton. Ball is knocked out of play by the Eagles by Jack Ireland, so it will be possession Dukes. Or rather, I'm sorry, possession Georgia Southern. That was off of Blanton. Hardy going to throw it in. A good field position for the Eagles, and the Eagles manage to get it back. Stole it away by Evan Southern. Romero running in and boots it downfield. I mean, you're already seeing the energy for James Madison's Evan Southern. He's been all over the pitch so far in the opening minutes. That's the energy he brings to this team, and that's why he came to James Madison was to provide them that extra spark, and now that he's playing better, it's, it's fun to watch. Duke's head coach, Paul Zazinski, mentioned how Southern plays hard. As one of those players that you can rely on. We mentioned three goals on the season, 14 shots overall, 10 shots on target. Ball control has been more so going the Duke's way. On the near side, Blanton. Crossing the box. Finds a man on the far side. Header left. Just off. A good look to find Southern in the danger zone. Just off. We're eight minutes into this game, and that is Evan Southern's second shot already. That tells you what they're looking to do tonight. It was set up nicely. You already see how aggressive James Madison is going in. Georgia Shelton trying to find momentum, and the ball rolls out of play. Possession, James Madison. The Dukes wasting no time, and the Eagles will send it back to Romero. One of the keys that Coach Murphy spoke with us about in order to get a win is just trying to cut down on the number of chances that James Madison gets. And they've already taken three shots ten minutes in. This game's not starting out exactly how Georgia Southern want to, but the score is still the same. So you got to find a way to flip possession, get the ball on your side, and make your opportunities and make them count. Blanton, long pass. Looking for Giannis Leland and sent out of play by the Eagles. Kubel back in. So that's good to see for the Eagles. Kubel going down in the opening minutes. Romero going down in the opening minutes. But both okay and still on the pitch. From the middle, collision, and now a whistle. Southern getting tied up with Kubel. So what's been the big thing that stood out to you, Hunter, in the opening minutes as Southern almost got a steal there. Romero, quick with the hands. This shows how aggressive that he is. He does not stop. He is always trying to get the ball in the goal at whatever cost. That's really been the big thing that stood out in the opening minutes, just Southern's presence on the field. Back to the near side to Blanton. He's been the go-to man trying to find men in the box. Gets past Chase Winters. Up top to Jay Strine. Down the center circle. Melker Onshelm towards the far side. We're looking for Liam Moore. There's two four on the pass. Possession Eagles. 
I'd like to see that pass come a little bit shorter. You know, Anselm's got the talent to do it and the knowledge to do it. Settle in, get these shots, get these opportunities. So Romero with a goal kick. Making his 11th start on the season. 32 saves on the year as well. We might see some offensive production from the Eagles here. And stolen away. Leland gives it back to Blanton. Over to the far side, stolen by Odiambo for Georgia Southern. Now Alex Smith on the move. Far side, Odame back to Smith, cross. Kicked away by the Dukes. Didn't get into the box there, but that's the type of run you would like to see Georgia Southern go on a little bit more often, but finish the opportunity and get a good chance at a shot. Cody Hambo, another steal. Eagles regain possession. Odame lost it. Krakowiak from the middle, looking inside for Leland and stolen by the Eagles. As we mentioned, both teams looking for their first win in Sun Belt Conference play. Long pass and an offsides call. Leland didn't think he was offside, but nonetheless, possession Eagles. From the middle again, here's Rodrigo Robles. On the far side, in the box. Pass deflected. Looking for Southern again. And that just has to be the player that you have to keep your eyes on at all times. It was a good, good idea there by Southern to kind of lay back, let Georgia Southern fly to the ball. And that didn't work on that occasion, but you could see he was trying to get that cross in there, and Southern was going to be wide open for that goal. Second corner kick for JMU. Leland, redshirt sophomore from Madrid, Spain. On the kick, floats one over and out of play. Was just off looking inside for Tyler Clegg. So another corner kick for the Dukes, this time from the near side. This time, Krakowiak on the kick and sent away by the Eagles. Player down for JMU, Robles. And play will stop. Had a bit of a collision trying to get the ball. See him holding on to that right shoulder as he was walking up. Everybody trying to get ahead, and it looks like just something caught him right there in the head. Everybody trying to get that header. Colliding with the Eagles, Jack Ireland. His play resumes. Smith, pass to the far side, finds Odame, breaks through a defender. Still has the ball, pass towards the near side. Winters. Keeps it. Yeah. 
Pass in the box, looking for Odiambo. Ball still in play, goalkeeper out of position. Now the Dukes will recover and send the ball to the back line. This is the big thing Georgia Southern has to do as we're just over 16 minutes in. They, outside of that, potential set pieces haven't gotten anything going yet. They have got to find a way to get the ball in the attacking third and not only just get the ball there, but keep the ball and get those set, uh, set pieces as well, but get that ball get shots and get good shots, not just any shot, get a good shot. Out of play, possession, Eagles. Hardy will throw it in. Sophomore from Huntersville, North Carolina. Almost got it right back, and he does. It's a girl there as well, but a whistle. So a foul on the Eagles. The Dukes wasting no time. Pass was deflected. Eagles on the move. Ireland trying to get by, and that's a foul. Will it be inside the 18 for a penalty kick? It'll at least be a free kick for the Eagles at a great spot. Here's another look. Tried to get through him, and he just stayed right in the way. Didn't make a great play on the ball, and I'll call that foul every time. And that was on Melker Onselm. So this is pretty much 19 yards. And a great shot for the Eagles. It won't be a penalty kick, but Clegg will pick up a yellow card. So you mentioned how physical James Madison was, is Hunter, and how they lead the Sun Belt Conference in yellow cards. Well, they add another to their total. When you play as physical as this team does, you're going to add yellow cards up, but the, they got to find a way to play clean and still find a way to be aggressive. Number 34 on the season now. But this is a great look for the Eagles. Six-man wall for the Dukes. Angel Segrero and Victor Kubel. Figure out who's going to take the shot. So we'll see who takes it. Either Kubel or Seguero. Rather Segrero and nice stop by Conlin. Still in play for the Eagles. Inside the 18, headed out of play by the Dukes. Smith can't hang on. Fight for possession. And James Madison, another yellow card going to be given. And that may go to Austin Hardy. The first yellow card for James Madison, rather, was on Melker Onshelm. And now we may see the first for the Eagles. So Austin Hardy gets carded. But overall, what a good look from Georgia Southern, but an even better stop by Sebastian Conlon for the Dukes. Both sides are out there playing great soccer. Georgia Southern has to convert on those looks next time they get them. But as for freshman goalkeeper, that is a great save. And if he can keep that up, Georgia Southern's going to struggle to score. That is Conlin, Sunbelt leading 40-second save on the year. Meanwhile, a counterattack for the Dukes. On the far side, pass in the 18. Knocked away by the Eagles. The Dukes still have it. Blanton. Outside to Leland. Leland trying to turn a corner. He does. Back out. Robles in the box looking for a cross. Knocked out by Hardy. 
That'll bring up the fourth corner kick for James Madison. So Rodrigo Robles, a redshirt junior from Spain. Here's another corner, and that was high atop the crossbar and out of play. So midway through the first half, and we saw our, our first shot from Georgia Southern from close range couldn't connect. Great stop by Conlin. And three shots so far in the first for JMU. And one save from the Eagles, Dagoberto Romero. You see the shot comparison, and also one thing that stands out, Hunter, the shots on goal the same, but the corner kicks, five, or rather four, for James Madison. The Eagles haven't had one yet. Goes to show that James Madison's been keeping the ball on their attacking third instead of the Georgia Southern side. And because of that, getting corner kicks, getting set pieces, and getting easier chance to score. Pass inside, looking for Southern, was too far ahead. Sent to Romero. He'll pick it up. One thing that Duke's head coach, Paul Sosinski, talked to us about one of the keys to get a win, being able to finish their chances. And they've had some chances so far in the first. Hasn't been able to connect. Conlin scoops it up. Blanton down the near side, burst of speed. Touch pass to Leland. Leland turning, cross, just off. In the box. Strine. Back out to Leland. Inside and kicked out of play by Winters. The Eagles defense, though, has been great trying to stop the Dukes when they've gotten close in the attacking third. The back line for Georgia Southern has done a great job in the first half of this game. James Madison's got some shots but Georgia Southern's been very disruptive back there in preventing the amount of chances that James Madison thinks they should have had already. Winters, a junior from Thomaston, Georgia, the only junior in the lineup. Another corner for the Dukes. Push to the far side. Leland beating Segrero on the edge. Great punch out by Romero, knocked away by the Eagles. So five corner kicks for JMU and four shots. Nothing going yet. Pass inside the 18. Knocked away by the Eagles again. Kicked deep by Nick Gethridge. Midway through the first half. Leland. Going to get past Hardy. Near side, back pass to Robles. Anselm, pass on the far side, cross in the box, header by Leland, scooped up by Romero again. Leland's had a big impact early on this game. Almost, I don't know if he was going for the shot there or he was going for the uh, assist to Southern, but on the near side especially, he's been trying to get looks for other players a lot early in this first half. Alex Smith goes down, a foul was called, and we're going to have another yellow given to James Madison. Didn't see any contact there, but... A yellow still is given. And this time, Evan Southern given a yellow card. So it's already been very physical in the first half as Conlin, the ball is sitting right to him. So 
So the Dukes have had some looks. Out of play by the Eagles. We'll see our first group of substitutions for both sides. Clay O'Bara checking in for JMU. Redshirt junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. So Yona Kafka coming in for Georgia Southern. So we'll see how these first set of substitutions change the potentially the pace in the first half, approaching the 20-minute mark. What do you want to see from Georgia Southern here, Hunter? Keep defending, but get the ball in your attacking third. The more the ball stays on this side, the more opportunities James Madison's going to get, and eventually they're going to score. Inside the 18. Robles, cross, shot, too high. This time, the fifth shots go to Tad High from the Dukes. See, great setup, and just that was a great job by who is that right there? We say that because number 33, and there's not a number 33 on our roster sheet. But a great job by Jonah Kafka right there to get in the way, disrupt that play, and create a shot that wasn't on goal. Field for the Eagles. Winters. From the middle, going far side, has Odame. Odame working in. He gets tripped up, no foul. Another player down for Southern, Zachary Martin. Possession will stay with the Eagles. And the player that took the shot for JMU was Ethan Taylor. Taylor normally wearing number 30, rather than wearing number 13, wearing 33 tonight. Stolen by the Dukes. Not surprising to see Ethan Taylor get a look early leads James Madison in shots this year. The total 21 shots is nine on goal. That being number 10, he was just off for the Dukes. On the near side, Winters. He's going towards the far side, deflected. Great job by Strine for James Madison. Kubel heads it to Getheridge, and he will send it deep downfield. A one hop out of play. And Winters is down right at center circle. That is the third player that we've seen shaken up for the Eagles. Gets up quickly, but going to get checked out by the trainer. How have you seen Georgia Southern be able to handle the physicality of James Madison? You just got to stick to your game plan. When a team plays you this physical, you have to stick with what you were planning on. You can't play to their strengths. Manuel Prieto going to come in for Winters. Another junior, Prieto from Dalton, Georgia. 
We've seen how physical this game can be. A couple of yellow cards already given out. Belker Onshelm with one, Evan Southern with one, Austin Hardy with one as well for the Eagles. The far side stolen by the Eagles. Since the back line. Smith across midfield finds Odame. Great move. Back to Smith. Pass deflected. Prieto trying to keep it in play, and he does. Gets past Blanton. Cross. Nobody home. Still in the box, and Conlin. Great heads of awareness. Kicking out of harm's way. One of the Eagles had to get out of dodge quickly where they got hit in the face there. No look there at a shot, but Prieto did a great job of being aggressive and trying his hardest to keep that ball in that attacking third. It's the aggressiveness that Coach Murphy wants to see for the Eagles on an offsides call. So it seems like throughout the first half as it's progressed, Georgia Southern has gotten more comfortable, started to find some more looks in the attacking third. As James Madison looking the counter, you see the shots, the differential, five to one in favor of the Dukes. All it takes is one. So Georgia Southern just has to keep fighting, keep attacking, and all they need is one. And that'll change the tone of this game so far. Romero. And pick it up quickly. Coach Murphy has said there's a foul that there has been glimpses of growth from this young team. And really saw a spark a couple of weeks ago against Georgia State. The home matchup here just showed how the Eagles just kept fighting, even though the Panthers would score a goal a minute in. That game ended in a 4-2 loss for the Eagles, but it was definitely a, a, a turning point in the team as far as how well they played without getting a result that they wanted. A great job by Odame. And now foul. Georgia Southern did a great job of actually having the lead at one point in that game, 2-1. Didn't Couldn't finish the game, but it was a great job of seeing how you can get punched in the face right off the beginning. Find a way, get yourself back up, get back on top, but still couldn't find a way to finish, and I think that's what they need to do tonight is find a way to play a full 90 minutes. The near side, Prieto. Out to Smith. Smith keeping himself through the middle. Pass to the outside. Here's a cross and caught by Conlin. Conlon was going deep, almost collided with the, with the pole. But another save for James Madison. That's a great, great kick from Segrero right there. Made Conlon work for that one. Almost looked like a cross, but it was tailing like it was going to go in. Sometimes the intended result is not always the best result. Smith trying to get out of the way of the ref. On the near side, Kubel going to get the pass. Just looking for either Odiambo or Odame stone away. Duke's on the move. To the near side, Obara. And Prieto is there. One on two, he goes down, another foul. That is the fifth foul from James Madison in the first half. James Madison staying aggressive, but making some mistakes. Fouls and yellow cards early, but you can see how hard they continue to play. As they're out there, you see Prieto working hard, but Obara just 
making that mistake. Mention how physical it is. A substitution coming in is Evan Paez for the Dukes. Redshirt junior from Alexandria, Virginia. He'll come in for Obara. A free kick and good field position for the Eagles. Prieto gets ahead. Segrero passes to the outside. Far side. In the box. Zachary Martin lost it. That's the type of look if you're Georgia Southern, you have got to try to find a shot in that kind of scenario. You have the ball in your 18 box. Still not finding a shot. Here's a counter for the Dukes. Pass inside the 18. Shot off left. Another good look for the Dukes. Number six on the first half. And that time Cameron Arnold, the true freshman, just off. I mean, it's, the game has shown that JMU has been more of the aggressors in this half because the only shot you saw from Southern was off a free kick. It was a great look there, and he just didn't, couldn't convert. Freshman, he's a freshman. You'll get a lot of great looks. You just got to find a way to convert them. Player down for the Eagles. Another collision. Just mentioned how physical this game is. We still have a whole other half left to go. Kubel. Goes to the far side to go back towards the middle. Kubel gets it right back. 11 minutes to play in the first half, even though the Dukes have outshot the Eagles 6-1. to one, We are still scoreless. For Georgia Southern, all it takes is one good look inside the box. Odame chasing, knocked away. That was almost that good look right there, Danny. And now Arnold... On the counter, inside the 18, shot right to the hands of Romero. Arnold moving aggressive there, but didn't have any help behind him. He's trying to make it all on his own. What can Georgia Southern do here in the final 10 minutes to get one more good look? Slow down. Get the ball moving. Great passes. Don't try to move the ball too far at one time. And set Odame up to get somebody else a look. For JMU, they have been the aggressors in this half. Krakowiak over to Obara. Just outside the center circle, Strine. Good passing from the Dukes. Krakowiak to the far side, stolen by the Eagles. Odiambo finds Smith. He goes down, and there is another foul from JMU, number six. You mentioned how physical James Madison is, and it just continues to be put on display. And you can see by the look here on Alex Smith that this is a team that's, see, oh, yeah. Just making that contact right there and a little intense. And you can see Alex Smith standing up here a little slow, like, this team's beating me up. That's what Sunbelt Conference soccer is all about. It's going to be physical. Both teams need their first win in conference play. Inside the 18 for the Eagles. Shot off the hands, and Conlin quickly recovers. And it was Adame once again trying to get the ball in the box. That was the type of look Georgia Southern needs to get. They need to regroup. Don't get stressed. Try to find those kind of looks again. Blanton passes upfield. Kubel there for the deflection. 
Will that be a foul? That's going to be a foul on JMU. Obara in a battle with Kubel. Just great job of Kubel right there, standing between Obara and the ball, and Obara just doing what he could to move him out of the way. It was a little too much. Romero going to keep this one close to Getheridge. Looking for Odame downfield. It's good defense again from JMU. On the far side, the Dukes go. Cross gets over Romero's head, but rolls left out of play. Get it back in the attacking third. Good stop by Prieto. Kept in play, but rolls out. This may be dangerous for the Eagles. Crack of Viak. Back towards midfield. See the total shot, 7-2 to two in favor of James Madison, but both of the Eagles shots have been on goal. Where only three of seven for James Madison have been on target. Georgia Southern's looks haven't been that plentiful, but they've been really good looks when they're getting them. And the Dukes have had a couple of set pieces with five corner kicks. Tyler Clegg passes to the outside. Obara foul. And Evan Paez down for James Madison. It's gonna be a free kick. A good spot for the Dukes. Just gets tangled up right there. Looks like possibly got stepped on as well. So the clock still winding down under five and a half minutes to play in the first half. This will be a good look and set up for James Madison. Five-man wall up front for the Eagles. Tyler Clegg and Clay Obara setting up. Who will take the shot? It's Obara off the hands of Romero and caught. Great save right there, but great look by James Madison. Great shot, great position. And Romero right there just jumping up and saving it from going to the back of the net. He was looking for one final chance before they go to the locker room for halftime. Ball one hops to Conlon. Conlin, two saves in the first half. Dagoberto Romero, three saves, and he has been challenged in the first half, and he's been able to hold his own fairly well. Clegg, deep pass, looking for Blanton. Sent out of play by the Eagles. Good passing. Near side. And deflected off of Key and Dean for Georgia Southern. That'll bring up the six corner kick for the Dukes. James Madison has been able to hold the ball and they're attacking third, a lot of the first half, getting tons of shots, tons of corner kicks. But Georgia Southern's defense has done a great job of keeping these from happening. Another player down for the Dukes inside the 18. Good defense from the Eagles, knocks it out of play. The 
Gets over to Clegg and sent back out. Towards the near side, Romero runs out. This will be a great time for Georgia Southern to possibly get a shot off, get the ball possession for the last two and a half minutes of this half, and try to create some momentum going into the second half. Romero going to boot this one downfield. Nobody there to retrieve it. One final chance for JMU. JMU, just take your time. Don't get any chance. Get your chance. Get a good shot. In the middle. Nice touch pass. Arnold shot. Goal! And just like that, Cameron Arnold found his shot and put the Dukes on the board. 1-0 with 134 to play in the first half. That was a great job by Cameron Arnold of being patient, not taking the first shot, making a move, and then getting a shot in the back of the goal. Watch here with this little move, and as soon as that gap opened, he took it. Third goal on the season for the true freshman from Germany, Cameron Arnold. Coach Zazinski mentioned how he was still adjusting early in the year, but has done a good job Usually it takes half a season for newcomers to get adjusted to the college level and the understanding. And he's going to get better over time. Well, that's just a, a product right there of how he's been able to progress throughout the year, picking up his third goal. It was just a great job being patient and getting the perfect shot in that scenario. Smith goes down for the Eagles, and we will see another yellow card. This time, Paya is going to get carded. In conference play, there's a lot on the line, but you have to stay disciplined. I'll oh, just cut him off right there. And Smith knew, threw the right hand up, saying, "Hey, it's got to be a card, right?" So that's going to put the Eagles in good field position. A little bit of time left. 121 can get one more look, possibly to even it up. This is the type of look you look for. Segrero, shot, rolls right, just off for Malik Smith. George Southern's got to keep their heads up. It's only a one score game. That was a great look. You'll get more. You have to create them, though. On the other end, Arnold looking to go two for two. Flips one pass Romero. No, good deflection. Great like, movement. Looks like Arnold scored a goal. Now he wants to create more. Got a little confidence. Wants to attack. There was no offside call either. So that was a great one-on-one -on -one battle, but an even better stop by Romero. Here's a cross from Blanton. Header off the crossbar. Knocked away. Another shot. Will that count? No. Arnold almost had his second goal in the night. That was a beautiful look as well for JMU, but it won't count. James Madison turning up the aggression here at the end of this first half. In the first half, will come to a close. The Dukes will go to the locker room with a 1-0 lead, led by Cameron Arnold with his third goal on the season. And get this, Hunter, 11 shots from James Madison in the first half with six on goal. It's been a shot clinic for them. They have got to find a way to get more of these shots in the back of the net, though. If you're Georgia Southern, you have got to slow down James Madison, especially in Georgia Southern on the outside looking in. 
As far as the top eight go, because out of the nine teams in the Sun Belt, only the top eight will reach the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. You can tell there's a lot riding on this game because of that, by the aggression that both teams have shown in the first half. It's pretty much the final stretch of the season. Only a handful of games left for both teams with the tournament starting in early November. So a win here for either team it just pushes that momentum for either side for the remainder of the year. Josiah Blanton will throw it in for JMU. Physicality continuing to pick up as Chase Winters tripped up for a moment. Liam Moore gets past Odame, and that goes out of play. Yona Kafka throws in for the Eagles. He'll throw it in again. You see Duke's head coach Paul Zazinski in his fifth season with the program. He's had a lot of success at James Madison back in the Colonial Athletic Association. Hoping to translate that in future years to the Sun Belt. One of the three new teams that joined the Sun Belt Conference this year. Chance for the Dukes. Up top inside the 18, stolen by the Eagles. Looking for Odame, was touched out of play by Strine. The Sun Belt Conference brought back men's soccer this year after, after it was disbanded last season. And Georgia Southern actually had to play in the, the MAC Conference. But with the Sun Belt coming back, you bring back the three original teams, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, and Coastal Carolina. You add the newcomers that joined back on July 1st in James Madison, Old Dominion, and Marshall. And then you add the affiliates with Kentucky, South Carolina, and West Virginia makes for a very competitive conference. And that's one thing that Coach Zazinski mentioned. It's one of the best conferences in the country. When you have Kentucky and Marshall top five in the nation, it's amazing. Got to give credit to them to the season that they've had to put the Sun Belt on the map. This conference is incredibly deep this year from top to bottom. Quality teams every single game. You have to bring your A game every single time. Another team that Coach Zazinski added that you have to compete and put your best product on the field. All about competing with so many good teams. Anybody can beat anyone on any given night. And the Dukes have had those challenges early in the year in Sun Belt play. A loss 3-1 to Georgia State, tied Old Dominion, and a 3-1 loss to Kentucky. And their non-conference tie against American on Tuesday was the final non-conference game of the season. So from here on out, it's all Sun Belt teams, so you don't have those non-conference games to make adjustments. Now you have to put your best foot forward in every game throughout the rest of the season. Both teams have very tough opponents coming up as well. Both teams still have to play Marshall, which, as you said earlier, is a top five team in the country right now. Almost stolen away. The Dukes have it. Strine going towards the near side. Has a man in Taylor. In the middle. Segrero for the Eagles. They go to the back line to Kafka. Advances up to Ireland. Both out of play. Possession, Georgia Southern. George Southern needs to play smart here and make good passes. Get the ball in their attacking third. Pass deflected. A chance for the Dukes. Shot just off from Robles. A little high there, but good job by James Madison getting the ball. 
being, being aggressive and attacking quickly. The Dukes want to remain aggressive coming back out. Looking to duplicate their success from the first half. If you're Georgia Southern, what do you believe the message was from Coach Murphy in the locker room as Odame in the attacking third keeps Chase Winters inside, shot deflected. Conlon running up, makes the catch. The message was stay calm. We are still in this game. We are only down one. We have got to find a way to create opportunities and attack. Our, de our defense is holding up. One goal, as many shots as they had, is not a bad number. Stay true to that and find possession and find ways to attack. Coach Murphy has talked about the small strides of good moments he's seen from this team, but he also mentioned that the, the good teams in the conference do it consistently. And that's the one thing he's looking for late in the year. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. And with a couple of Sun Belt Conference matchups left to go in the year, if you're able to turn things around, get one or two wins, you'll be in a good spot come tournament time, and then you can carry that momentum in the championship. This is a team that they can't throw in the towel, as he said, yet. They have got to keep fighting, keep working, and you see those strides, and they have, if they find that consistency, this is a team that I think could make a run, get a couple upsets, and look back and go, we improved so much from the beginning of the year and take that in the next year. Now, 1 in 10, of course, people will look at 1 in 10 and think, well, Georgia Southern hasn't had the best year from a record standpoint. You could agree with that, but Coach Murphy is more so concerned with the progression of his players and how they've been improving because you got to remember, this is a young Georgia Southern team that brought in, I believe, 18 freshmen to the program. So trying to redevelop that culture as the Dukes in the attacking third cross, nobody home. Open space, shot off of Romero, knocked away by the Eagles. Dukes get it right back. Long shot goes right. Heads up over there in the bleachers. Always got to have your head on swivel, Danny. Always your head on swivel. You got to be ready at all times. No one's expecting that shot to just make a beeline. <laughs> oh, she's okay. She's laughing it off. She's laughing it off. Maybe saw her life flash before her eyes for a second there. But she's all good. I believe that's the Eagles women's soccer team in attendance watching the men play. Women's soccer plays on Sunday against Coastal Carolina. You ever had that happen to you, Hunter? Uh, a ball almost whizzed by your face and had to get out of dodge quickly? Uh, not at a live sporting event. A couple of uh, late reaction times and other situations, but nothing, nothing too scary. Nothing too scary, okay. That was the third team shot from the Duke. So he took two shots in that current sequence, previous sequence rather. JMU on the move again. Across midfield. Far side Blanton. Inside the box, shot, goal! Once again, Cameron Arnold, his second goal on the night, and it's 2-0 Dukes. Cameron Arnold has found some energy from the end of the first half and has transferred it here into the second half now. James Madison staying aggressive. Setting him up, and just a great little right foot tap into the back of the goal. Nice pass by Clay O'Bara. Finding Arnold again. James Madison's doing a great job of passing with purpose. Every single pass they kick around, it looks like it's going somewhere for a reason. O'Bara the assist. His first on the season. And for the young freshman Arnold, already doubling his total number of goals. Started out with two and has two tonight. Only a freshman. 
exciting to be, see what he'll do in the future years. I think it's unique to see because in the opening of this game, it was all Evan Southern, who we have not seen lately in this match. He was all over the field in the opening minutes being aggressive. And that may have just opened things up for other players to get in space, and that may be how Arnold has been able to find his spots. Evan Southern was a menace in the first half. A little quiet, disappeared a little bit in the second half, but it'll be interesting to see if he comes back in this game and if he makes another impact like he did in the first part of the first half. The Eagles trying to answer back. Odi Hombo chasing, lost it. The middle Robles finds Blanton on the far side. Eagles will throw it in. Just looking for Odame. Good steal. Ireland inside the 18 on the left corner. Punched out by Conlon. Right at the last second. That's a freshman that Coach Murphy talked about as someone that's improved a lot this year for Georgia Southern. And it's great to see him making an impact in this game. This will be, this will not be a throw in. This will not be a corner kick rather, it will be a throw in. And the box kicked away. Eagles recovered, that is Harp. Just checked in. In the 18, Odame there off the head. Bounce around, Odiombo to Winters. Ireland. Lost it, Odiombo has it swept away and a whistle. And that's gonna be another yellow card given. This time to the Eagles as Rodrigo Robles is down holding on to his leg. Georgia Southern down, trying to find some extra aggression. He's just finding a little bit too much right there. Got to tone it down. Can't make the silly mistakes. Hardy Hombo there just trying to find a little bit too much. So that will be the second yellow card for the Eagles. This time given to Hillary Odihambo. And a foul. Kick for the Dukes to the near side corner. Liam Moore on the cross, knocked away by the Eagles. James Madison, two goal lead, remaining aggressive. Trying to see if they can stretch this out and really put George Southern away. Another corner kick for JMU. The first of the second half. Header goes right. Still in the box, knocked out by the Eagles. Great job by Odame. Here come the Eagles on the counter. Ireland shaking a man off. Almost looking like a football player <laughs> trying to break a tackle right there. Yeah, a little start stop motion like a receiver. After making a catch. Letting that momentum over the fender go right past you. you. Might need to run out and pads tomorrow. Well, I mean, this is the, the first Eagles Dukes match. They'll be at football tomorrow, 4 p.m. on ESPN. May get back to his phone in the locker room and see a message from old Clay Hilton. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not the first time that Georgia Southern has recruited a, a soccer player to join the football team. Actually, way back in the 2012 season when the Eagles were in the FCS. 
in their semifinal game against North Dakota, the Eagles actually recruited a kicker or one of the soccer players to be their kicker because kicking wasn't the best for them throughout the season. They bring in a kicker and get this, the Eagles needed a field goal to tie, missed the field goal in the semifinals. Happens like that sometimes. <laughs> one of those, you think you're blessed with something and then, yeah, didn't turn out too well in the well, first Jeff place. Jeff Monk and Donald was a good idea. It just didn't work out in the long run. We yeah. see with a lot of football players, or a lot of football kickers that they have soccer backgrounds. So definitely not a bad choice, but doesn't always end how you want it. There's a free kick for the Eagles. There were another foul. That was the eighth foul from JMU. Victor Kubel going to set things up. One hop straight to Conlon. Deep pass and a chance for the Dukes again. Can Arnold go three for three? Romero goes down off the crossbar. However, the recoil by Ethan Taylor, and it's 3-0 Dukes. Great job of Ethan Taylor right there. Watching to see what Cameron Arnold did. Getting an open net off the bounce of the crossbar and putting it back there. Ethan Taylor. Took 21 shots before tonight and did not score a goal until tonight. First goal on the year for the redshirt sophomore from Virginia Beach. Watch this. Cameron Arnold thinks he's getting the hat trick. And then Ethan Taylor with almost like a rebound right there, putting it in the back of the net. Wow. That was a good look from Arnold as well. Romero went down. It was you can see the eyes widen for, for Arnold, but could not converge just off the crossbar, but Taylor was there making it 3-0, James Madison. You know Arnold was excited for the possibility of a hat trick right there in only his freshman season of college. Be great for a resume. Your first season in collegiate soccer, getting your first career hat trick. And he has had quite the night. For Ethan Taylor, on the other hand, you know it's got to feel good to finally see one hit the back of the net after so many shots attempted this year. Foul. So now for Georgia Southern, how do you remain composed here with 30 minutes to play regulation? You have got to, you, you have to attack. You have got to get as many looks as possible. You cannot let James Madison keep taking the ball down the field. The Eagles have yet to take a shot in the second half. However, James Madison, a total of 14 shots, looking to make it 15, and eight shots on goal. Or rather make it 15 shots and nine shots on goal now. Actually, I stand corrected again. 16 total shots for JMU. Nine on goal. Compared to the Eagles, two shots and two on goal. Got to show just what James Madison's done already in the second half with five shots in the first 15 minutes. Five shots and two goals. It seems like the Dukes, once they started to find their rhythm, they scored that first goal with a minute and a half to go. And then just carried that momentum straight out of the locker room. Momentum's a big thing. Once you have it, it's hard to lose it. This is a great turnaround for the Dukes. Coach Zazinski said that even though they tied against American on Tuesday, he was a little bit disappointed that they didn't get the win, even though he felt like the team played well. Had an unfortunate situation there at the end of that game for them with having a handball, creating a penalty kick in the in the last minute that American ended up converting and tying up that game. Kubel shaking up a bit. Oh, just another contact with such an aggressive game. I mean, we've seen so many players have these kind of run-ins tonight and have to take a minute to sit down and get back up. 
but these guys are competitors. Here's a cross from the Eagles. Great deflection by JMU. Chase Stride once again. And this is going to be the Eagles' first corner kick of the night. Maybe this is something that for the Eagles they can create some momentum. Cross, Conlin with the catch. Great job of Conlin there coming up and just getting that ball and shutting down any chance the Eagles had. Here's a counter. Arnold with the pass towards the middle, off the hands of Romero, and he'll run quickly to scoop it up. Kevin Larson there really was hoping he could get to that ball just a little bit sooner, but Roberto getting up really quickly and cutting off that chance. Substitution for the Eagles. Kubel goes out and Alex Smith will return. Send it deep. Approaching the midway mark in the second half for James Madison. First year in the Sun Belt Conference. And more than anything, is happy they can compete for a championship. This is a Dukes team that had a lot of success in the CAA. Hunter, you touched on it earlier. Winning. CAA championships over the last couple of years. However, last year with the transition overall for James Madison joining the Sun Belt and for football going from FCS to FBS, the Dukes couldn't compete in the CAA tournament last season. And that really hurt the Dukes because they didn't find out until their senior night game. And they were set to host the CAA tournament too. But once they found out, it just really, it was a big blow in, in just really hurt the Dukes. It's a heartbreaking situation for anybody on that team. And last year, as you said, hosting that tournament, they were in a position to possibly even get a national at large bid if they didn't win that tournament. And getting that taken away from them on senior night, you have to feel for the guys that, that left this team last year and never got that opportunity. The motto last year for James Madison was make history. There has never been a team in the CAA that won four straight conference championships. So the Dukes were about to four-peat. They already three-peated, which is incredible enough as it is. In five days before all the other teams in the conference were supposed to make their way in the, in the town, you find out that you're ineligible for the conference tournament. And, the, you know, the players, it impacts them the most more than anything. It does. And for anybody that played sports during COVID, they understand that feeling of getting something taken away from you that you were expecting. But for these James Madison seniors, it was different. They had done so much, three straight conference titles, and they were gonna get a chance to finish every single year with a conference championship, and they lost that. I mean, think about it, winning in 2018, 2019, even in the shortened 2020 COVID season, still won a championship. And when things were starting to get back to normal and it seemed like things were going up for JMU, going to a new conference and, and everything, it was really looking to leave a mark before they jumped to the Sun Belt. And they were the favorites to, to win the conference tournament. They ho they were gonna host it. This was a team that was ranked as high as 15th last year and did not get the chance to really get that tournament. And probably would have ended very well for them and even a bit in the national tournament. So now with that behind the Dukes, JMU looks for entry into the Sun Belt tournament. As we mentioned, only the top eight teams will advance in early November. And both James Madison and Georgia Southern without a win in conference play. Another offsides call this time on the Dukes. It'll be in, it'll be Interesting knife. James Madison can hold out these final 23 minutes and get their first ever Sun Belt win. 
maybe that's something that can change the momentum for them and they can actually make a run in this year's conference tournament to make up for last year. And it's possible that the Sun Belt could be more than a one bid league. I mean, we mentioned how Kentucky and Marshall, two of the top teams in the nation out of the Sun Belt. Those are two teams that could meet in the conference championship as well. But if they have good resumes and play well throughout the rest of the year, you know, when the committee looks into it, you know, they could look at Kentucky and Marshall and be like, we, could, we want both of those teams in there. And it could be a situation where somebody like West Virginia or Georgia State puts something together, makes a run in that conference tournament, pulls out a couple upsets and wins it, and then you're stuck. You have two teams that were ranked top five this late in the season, not automatic bids. What do you do? It'll make things interesting for sure in the Sun Belt. And overall, that's just all good problems to have for a conference. And, you know, Sun Belt Commissioner Keith Gill has to be incredibly pleased with just the progression of the Sun Belt overall throughout the last couple of months. Here's a cross for the Dukes. Still inside the 18, knocked away by Georgia Southern. It's great to have men's soccer back in this conference and it be this strong. So many quality teams from top to bottom. Another thing, Keith Gill, the commissioner, is going to be in Statesboro. He'll be at the Georgia Southern James Madison football game tomorrow. Our sideline reporter, Emily Grace McWhorter, will have an interview with Keith Gill at halftime as... Another yellow card going to be given to James Madison. Prieto down for the Eagles. Tyler Clegg right there just making contact. Picking up that yellow card. That is the fourth yellow card for James Madison tonight. They've kept up that reputation of having the most yellow cards in the Sun Belt. With this much aggression, you see that. Georgia Southern, long pass inside the box, caught by Conlon. Oh, good pass, Arnold offside. There have been some good looks on both sides in the last few minutes, but neither, key, neither team can stay on the right path. No, I think both teams here are getting a little bit sloppy towards the end of the game. They got to clean it up and still finish strong. There's still 20 minutes left, and a lot can happen if you're not careful. And for Georgia Southern, just because you're down 3-0, you can still use these final 20 minutes just to find some momentum and just be able to pick things up because the Eagles have a quick turnaround. They go on the road and play at Stetson on Tuesday. You have to take as much out of this as you can and build off of it. And even if you score a goal in the next five minutes, a 3-1 to one game with 15 minutes left is not an insurmountable lead. When you look back at the Eagles' previous matchup against Georgia State, up 2-1, but then Georgia State tied it up with about 30 seconds later. And then State would score again to 66 minute, and the Eagles were close until the Panthers would score with nine minutes to go. Nice pass, Arnold shot off of Romero, knocked away by Gethridge. Support it with a young team trying to find a way to finish all 90 minutes of a game. They've had a lot of highs this year. The record may not indicate that, but you can build off of that. Coach Murphy mentioned this was a transition year with these young players, and now you're going to see a mass group of substitutions for JMU and a few players check in for the Eagles. Thaddeus Harp returning in. It's a multitude of players for the Dukes. Prince Lonnie Bailey, one of them. So rather for Georgia Southern, Noah Escobar and Thomas Jackson going to check in. 
So what do these last 18 minutes and change mean for the Eagles and just trying to find some consistency to go forward after tonight? See if you can play this complete game. You've let it get a little bit. You've let George, James Madison get some goals here in the second half, but if you can shut them out here in these last 20 minutes, you can build off of that. You have to find the little things that you can build off of and take in the Stetson into a non-conference game and try to build that back up for the last couple of Sun Belt games. That Stetson matchup on Tuesday, the final non-conference matchup for Georgia Southern this season, and they have a tough finish to their schedule. Go to Marshall right after, who's ranked number four for the nation right now. Then you're back home for your final home matchup on the season on the 28th against West Virginia, and you finish off the year November 1st in Conway at Coastal Carolina. It's been a tough schedule for Georgia Southern this year. They've had quality opponent after quality opponent. Starting with Charlotte, Kentucky on the road. Then having to go to Huntington, West Virginia to go play Marshall. Inside the 18. Shot goes left. James Madison continuing to be aggressive. In time is Guillet Amore. Being aggressive is in this team's DNA. They do not stop until all 90 minutes are up. And you can see that here tonight. You also have to remember, you know, there's a lot of players that were a part of some of those conference championships in the CAA. And also a part of the great season that they had last year. It's that cross, rather corner kick, goes off the crossbar and out of play. They understand what makes championship teams. And they know that championship teams play until it's over, and they know that by getting these opportunities, they make themselves better. 18 shots from the Dukes, just the two for Georgia Southern. The Eagles have yet to take a shot in the second half, and also 10 shots on goal for JMU as well. James Madison has dominated the second half. Arnold really wants that hat trick. Start stopping inside the 18, knocked away. Waited just a little too long on that one. Trying to wait for the perfect shot and believe possibly he he missed it. <laughs> just got up on top of him right there. That was like a little piggyback ride. Zachary Martin just trying to find space. Three nil, James Madison. Here we're fun to approaching the final fifteen minutes. Cameron Arnold scoring the first two goals. Ethan Taylor assisting the first, Clay Obara assisting the second. It was almost a hat trick for Arnold, but hit the top of the crossbar and Taylor was there as Romero scoops that one up. Taylor was there for the rebound, as you mentioned, Hunter, and made it 3-0. So it was like a great center on the offensive glass, standing right there waiting for it and getting an open look. Pretty much a putback. It doesn't get much easier than that. Just waiting and it coming right to you. Hillary Odihombo and Jack Ireland stubbing back in the match. Jackson lost it, gets it right back. Kafka. On the far side. Turns a corner. 
Cross looking for Arnold over the head, caught by Romero. Arnold's not going to give up that hat trick just yet. Eagles on the move. Tess Madison doing a great job right here, just kind of playing keep away with Georgia Southern. I mean, at this point, is just playing clean soccer here in the final 13 minutes. I mean, they've been aggressive the majority of the way through, and they have a pretty sizable lead at 3-0. If things hold up, this would be their largest margin of victory this year. And Cameron Arnold, just look at the numbers. Two goals, six shots, four on goal. He's definitely been aggressive throughout the night. He's been a great player tonight. He has shown that he does not look like a freshman. He's played enough soccer that he thinks he is more, and he has a bright future ahead of him. I mean, we touched on it more so for Georgia Southern and their freshmen. Now, Coach Murphy said at this point, even though they're listed as freshmen, once you're halfway through the season, you're not really a freshman anymore, having games under your belt. And you can say the same for Arnold. Really starting to find his mark, and that's going to help adding another attacker for the Duke when you get closer to tournament time and the fact that JMU still has to play Marshall just like the Eagles do. Of course, and this James Madison... All their incoming freshmen, this was the 26th ranked class in the nation this year. And you can see their goalkeeper, Evan Southern as a transfer, Cameron Arnold. These are guys that are making impacts on this team early in their time. And now that they've learned a little bit and they're getting more mature, they're really setting the pace for this team. Player down then Amore gets back up quickly for the Dukes. Another player down for JMU. This time it's Ethan Taylor. Oh. Just a little contact again. Falling on that shoulder. But good to see him get right back up. Stretch it out. Keep going. A goal and an assist on the night. Taylor's another player that's had a great night out. A red shirt sophomore. Had his first goal of the season, as you said earlier. And good to see him make an impact on the season and move forward. That's more confidence for JMU because you know that had to feel good for Taylor. As you mentioned, he took 21 shots entering tonight, the most of anyone on the team, and then able to find the back of the net, even though it was off a rebound up of Arnold's shot. Still got to feel good, and it's another option you can get. And it seems like Conlin is going to be done for the night for JMU. So the Duke's starting to take off, take out a couple of their starters. Get some experience for some guys that haven't seen the field as much this year and build this team even deeper. New goalkeeper for James Madison is Drew Slack, a sophomore. He will send that one high and deep for JMU. We talked about the final couple of games in the season before the Sun Belt Tournament. And for JMU, it's all Sun Belt teams from here on out. West Virginia, South Carolina, Coastal Carolina, and Marshall. That's going to be a big test, especially that Marshall matchup. It's a tough schedule going through, but maybe tonight getting that first ever Sun Belt win can build some momentum, and the squad can go rolling and get some momentum going in a tournament and make a run. That was a big thing that Coach Zinsky wanted to see, especially coming off of that tie against American. He wanted to find some momentum going to the home stretch, and that was their main objective. And it seems like they found it. They played well on Tuesday, even though they tied in for Georgia Southern. The Eagles have Marshall as well. After their 
Final non-conference game against Stetson on Tuesday. Marshall, West Virginia, and Coastal Carolina. So both of these teams have a similar final few games of the season. It'll be interesting for Georgia Southern to see if they can keep playing hard and squeeze a win out here at the end of the year. Offside. And more than anything, all this is a great learning moments for this young Eagles team. You have to believe that, especially moving forward, they're trying to build a culture, and Coach Murphy has seen the progression of his players throughout the season. Having tough times and adversity like this year will only strengthen this team moving forward to compete further in the Sun Belt. One game at a time, you have to get better one game at a time, one practice. And for this team, they have done that. They have got to keep doing that. Game in and game out. Take it in the next year. And hopefully get much better results. And there still is time. With three more Sunbelt games after tonight. Oh, there's plenty of time. And who knows? Upsets can happen any night in the Sunbelt. Under eight minutes to go in the match. 3-0 James Madison. We thank you for joining us on this Friday night. Danny Wall and Hunter Mosley on the call. A night where James Madison took 18 shots and for Georgia Southern, offense non-existent in the second half. No shots. Just goes to show how well James Madison has controlled the ball here in the second half. Also a physical and aggressive matchup tonight. Combined 18 fouls and seven yellow cards. There was a lot on the line tonight, and you can tell by the way these two teams played. Possession goes to JMU. I expect JMU to stay aggressive here in the attacking third. Back pass to Prince Lonnie Bailey. Jordan McMillan now on the near side. Found Giannis Leland, player down for the Eagles. Inside the 18. Stands JMU will improve the five, six, and two on the year. They will get their first Sun Belt Conference victory, and more importantly, three points to move up in the standings. To put them in a good spot. And for Georgia Southern, still looking for their first win in the Sun Belt. This would drop them to 0 and 5 in conference play, 1 and 11 overall in the season. There's still more Sun Belt soccer left. Georgia Southern has got to keep their heads up. Just because this game wasn't the outcome they expected and they knew it was a pivotal turning point, it's not over yet. There are still three conference games for this team to get points and make it into that tournament. Shot deflected. The Dukes still have it. And also, these two teams aren't the only teams in the Sun Belt that haven't won a conference matchup. Coastal Carolina is still looking for their first win, too. Only difference is they are 0-0 and 3. So three ties in conference play, giving them three points, putting them ahead of both the Dukes and the Eagles. So you can look at that Coastal Carolina matchup for Georgia Southern Hunter if the Chanticleers remain winless in the Sun Belt. That could be a very pivotal matchup with a win being worth three points. 
And then Georgia Southern would have the head to head. Another yellow card going to be handed out. This time on Thomas Jackson for the Eagles. And that has to be a frustration card right there. Losing, losing your cool a little bit at the end of the game, but you have to remain composed. These are still important minutes. Shot from the Eagles. And that's going to be the first shot of the half with under three and a half to go. Good to see Georgia Southern still trying to get shots in the second half. It has not been a great second half for them, but they're not giving up. They're still trying to get looks. They're still trying to get better. Jackson lost it on the move. The Dukes foul. Another yellow. The ninth yellow card of the night. There he goes. Tries to make the tackle. It just gets wrapped up. Doesn't make a great play on the ball. I mean, I don't know if that should be a yellow. I mean, I appreciate you got to appreciate the aggressiveness from Jackson playing the whole way through. Oh, if you're Coach Murphy, you have the love that your players have not quit fighting in this game. I mean, look at that. Nine cards overall. Gonna give the Dukes a decent look. Leland, no, scooped up by Romero. Romero's had a lot of shots fired to him tonight. And while he let three get back there, he has still had seven saves tonight. Eight, eight, that is eight now. Make a look for one more shot. Inside the 18, shot off of Romero, knocked away by Gettridge. JMU still has it. That shot tailing upward and out of play. Also for JMU. Second win on the road. Improving the five, six, and two on the season. Romero, eight saves, tying a season high this year. It's been a matchup that's been all JMU from the start. 19 shots, 11 shots on goal, and a 3-0 win over Georgia Southern. So the Dukes win their first matchup